we're working with a power signal, x of t, and this power signal x of t has an autocorrelation function given by rx of tau equals 200 sinc of 200 pi tau. So this is the autocorrelation function of this signal. And we're going to do a variety of computations related to this power signal. In part a, we are going to find and plot Sx of f. This is what's called the PSD, the power spectral density of the signal x of t. Well, that's not too bad because we know that the power spectral density, Sx of f, and the autocorrelation function, Rx of tau, are just Fourier transform pairs. So if we go to our Fourier transform table, we can find a pair that looks something like this. 2b sinc of 2 pi bt in the time domain has a frequency domain representation of a rectangle function centered at frequency 0 with a total width of 2b. Well, that's exactly the form that we have in this problem. Our autocorrelation function can be written as 2 times 100 sinc of 2 pi 100t. So in this form, it's very easy to see that capital B is 100 which means that in the frequency domain we are dealing with a rectangle function centered at zero with a total width of 200. So our power spectral density is this equation and we can plot this as a function of frequency. It has a total width of 200 so it extends from minus 100 to 100 and it has a height of 1. So this is the power spectral density for this power signal x of t whose autocorrelation function was given in the problem. In part b Let's go ahead and compute the power, Px, the total power, of our signal x of t. So let's go ahead and do that computation. Well, this is easy to do now that we know what the PSD is. The power of a signal is always equal to the integral of its power spectral density. So this equation here is always true. P of x is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the power spectral density of x over all frequencies. So for our particular problem that we're working, we have this power spectral density. So what we're doing when we perform this integral is we're really just adding up all the area under the curve of the power spectral density, which is this shaded blue region. So that's really easy to do for this particular problem. This integral equation is always true. For this particular problem, adding up area turns into computing the area of a rectangle, which is the base times the height. The base is 200, the height is 1. So we have a power of 200 as the total power of our signal x of t. In part c, let's compute the 95th percent bandwidth of x of t. So normally when we talk about percent bandwidth, we're dealing with signals whose frequency content actually goes over the entire frequency axis. If there's not a spot where it actually goes to zero, it stays zero for all time. That's usually the purpose of having a quantity like the 90% bandwidth or the 95th percent bandwidth. In this problem, we do have a signal whose frequency content goes to zero and stays zero for all frequencies above that frequency. For this particular problem, our signal has no frequency content above 100 hertz. So in some ways, computing the 95th percent bandwidth for this signal doesn't make a lot of sense because it has a very well-defined bandwidth. It's just 100. But just to get some practice with what the 95th percent bandwidth means, we're going to head and go ahead and do it for this problem. So let's go ahead and sketch our power spectral density again. And what does it mean to compute the 95th percent bandwidth? What that means is we're trying to find a point B on the frequency axis such that when we integrate between minus B and B, that area that we add up is 95th percent or 95 percent of the total power. So what we want, if we're computing the 95% bandwidth, we want this blue area to be 95% of our total area. Obviously, if we were asked to compute the 80% bandwidth, we would try to find B such that the area was 80% of the total area. But that's not what we're doing here. We're doing the 95th percent. So that's pretty easy. We can write an equation for this area. The equation for this area is the integral from minus B to B of the power spectral density and we set that equal to the percentage we want. We want that equal to 95% of the total power or 95% of 200. So what do we have? We have, this is really the integral from minus b to b of one because our power spectral density is equal to one on this interval. And that's equal to 180 because 0.95 times 200 is 180. We can go ahead and do the integral. That integral reduces to 2b. So we have 2b equals 80 and then we solve for b and we see that b equals 95, so our 95th percent bandwidth is 95. Finally, here in part d, 
we are going to pass x of t through an ideal low pass filter and the output of that is a signal that we call y of t. So we've taken our power signal which has a power spectral density that we know because we computed it and it has an autocorrelation function that we know because we were provided it and we we're going to pass this signal through an ideal low pass filter. The amplitude response of this ideal low pass filter is a rectangle function. So its amplitude response is a rectangle function centered at zero with a total width of 100. What we are going to do is we are going to compute PY, the power of Y of T. So we already computed the input power. We figured out that the input power was 200. We're passing this signal through some filter, so we expect that the output power is going to be some different number. At most, it's 200. At most, power in is power out. You, you put, get, get out what you put in, never more. So at most, we know that PY is 200. But if this ideal low-pass filter eliminates any frequency components, the power of the output, P sub Y, will be less than the power of the input. So how are we going to do this? Well, one way to do this is we could compute PY if we knew what the power spectral density of Y was. So if we knew SY of F, the PSD of Y of T, we could just integrate it and get PY, just like we did previously when we computed PX. So the question is, how do I get SY of F? Well, there's a very fundamental relationship. When you are dealing with a linear time invariant system, this relationship tells us how the input PSD, which is SX of F, and the output PSD, in this case SY of F, they are related to each other via the amplitude response. I can compute my output power spectral density by taking my input power spectral density times the magnitude squared of the amplitude response of my low-pass filter, or my, of my system. In this particular case, it's a low-pass filter. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that Sx of f is the rectangle function of f over 200. We know that our amplitude response squared is a rectangle function of f over 100. Notice that the amplitude response and the amplitude response squared are the same thing because the rectangle function is equal to either 0 or 1. When I square 0, it stays 0. When I square 1, it stays 1. So it doesn't change. Here is a plot of Sx of f. And what are we doing to compute the output PSD Sy of f? We multiply it by the amplitude response squared of our system. So you can see what's going to happen when I multiply these two things together. The smaller rectangle is going to limit the large rectangle and we're going to end up with just a rectangle with a total width of 100 whose amplitude is 1. So this right here is a picture for SY of F, and I've gotten that picture by multiplying those two pieces together. Looking at that, I can tell what the equation is. It is just a rectangle function itself from minus 50 to 50 with amplitude 1, so I can go ahead and compute P sub Y. P sub Y is just the integral of the power spectral density of Y. So I'm going to integrate from minus 50 to 50 of 1, and that gives me 100. So the power of the output signal is equal to 100. And this makes sense because essentially my system has removed half of the frequency content. My input PSD went from minus 100 to 100. My output PSD only goes from minus 50 to 50. The power is a half in this case.